Hello, everyone, and Happy New Year. My name is Laura Adams, and I want to welcome you to the first Money Girl podcast of 2021. We're finally here. I've been hosting this show since 2008, and if you've been part of the community, you know that each episode is like a mini training. We cover a wide variety of topics, including credit, debt, investing, real estate, business, taxes, insurance, being a solopreneur or running a small business, money management strategies, and lots more. Many of the topics I cover come from you. They come from your emails, voicemails, and discussions in my Dominate Your Dollars Facebook group. So please keep them coming. And if you're a new listener, I am thrilled that you're here, and I hope you'll stick around by subscribing. You'll find the notes for each show and the full archive of podcasts in the Money Girl section at quickanddirtytips.com. So if you are ready to turn the page on your life and finances this year, I am glad you're here. This show is for you if you've got a retirement account or you want to have a retirement account. IRAs or individual retirement accounts are special because they're available to just about everyone, no matter your work situation. You own one as an individual, so it's a really important account to understand and to get familiar with. So even if you don't have a Roth IRA right now, or maybe you earn too much to qualify for one, stay with me. This show will help you understand more about them and how to fund one no matter your income. This is episode number 666 called, What is a Backdoor Roth IRA? And it was inspired by Jana S., who says, I just listened to your podcast about what to do if you over-contribute to a tax-advantaged account, especially when you earn too much to qualify for a Roth IRA. I'm interested in how to do a backdoor Roth. What are the rules that apply for transferring funds from a traditional IRA to a Roth? Thank you for your question, Jana. If you're a regular Money Girl reader or podcast listener, you've definitely heard me talk about the fantastic tax benefits of a Roth IRA. The problem is, as Jana mentioned, the door to a Roth IRA gets slammed in your face if you make too much money. And I'll explain more about that in a moment. Well, sometimes when you can't get in the front door, the back door is wide open. So we're going to answer Jana's question and discuss a strategy known as the backdoor Roth or a Roth conversion, which allows high earners to fund a Roth IRA without breaking the rules. So let's start out by reviewing what exactly a Roth IRA is. And as I mentioned, it's a retirement account for individuals, and it is never taxed after you make your initial original contributions. So instead of getting an upfront tax deduction like you do with a deductible contribution that you make to a traditional IRA, with a Roth IRA, you can withdraw those contributions and your earnings entirely tax-free. As long as you've had the account for at least five years and you reach the official retirement age of 59 and a half. So you can make IRA contributions as long as you've got earned income and no matter your age. So this is for minors or seniors, as long as you've got some amount of earned income. You can't contribute more to an IRA than you earn. So to contribute the maximum for 2021, which is $6,000 or $7,000 if you're over age 50, you got to make at least that much money. But as I mentioned, not everyone qualifies for a Roth IRA. For 2021, single taxpayers must have an adjusted gross income of $125,000 or less to make a full contribution. And if you're married and you file taxes jointly, you have to earn $198,000 or less to qualify. If your income exceeds these annual limits, you can keep an existing Roth IRA. But you just can't make any new contributions. Now, note that if you have a Roth at work, maybe you've got a Roth 401k or a Roth 403b, those do not have income limits to qualify. 
Unlike a Roth IRA, you can max out these accounts every year, no matter how much you earn. So remember that the Roth IRA is very unique in the fact that it has an income limit on how much you can earn in order to qualify. So now let's talk about a backdoor Roth IRA. This is not a type of retirement account. It's just a method for high earners to fund a Roth IRA, even when they don't qualify for regular contributions. So again, if your income is below these annual Roth IRA threshold limits that I just mentioned, you don't need a backdoor Roth because you can make regular front door contributions. But when you earn too much to qualify, this is a strategy. So in order for this strategy to work, first, you've got to have a traditional IRA set up and you've got to make a non-deductible contribution. So let me explain. Typically with a traditional IRA, you're making tax deductible contributions. You get to skip the tax on the contribution that you put in. But in addition to that, you can also make non-deductible taxable contributions to a traditional IRA. And interestingly, the IRS allows you to convert non-deductible IRA contributions to a Roth IRA, which is the whole backdoor concept. This is a clever and legitimate way to move money into a Roth IRA, even if you earn too much to qualify for one. So to create a backdoor Roth IRA, you must make a non-deductible, which is a taxable contribution to a traditional IRA, and you've also got to file a form. It's IRS Form 8606 non-deductible IRAs. So this is a form that allows uh, the government to keep up with what you're doing here. So once you have made that non-deductible contribution to a traditional IRA and filed this form 8606, you can roll over those funds into a Roth IRA and you won't owe any taxes except on any investment growth in the account that's earned between the time of your contribution to that traditional IRA and the Roth conversion. And so if it was a short period, you know, a week or two or a month, your earnings and the resulting tax should be pretty small. But once your funds are in a Roth IRA, the earnings can grow and be withdrawn tax-free in retirement. So that's kind of the benefit of moving it into a Roth IRA. And as I mentioned, there's no income limit for traditional IRA contributions, only for Roth IRA contributions. So converting non-deductible contributions from a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA allows anyone, regardless of income, to fund a Roth IRA. Now, there are some problems with doing a backdoor Roth IRA that you need to be aware of. While sneaking into a backdoor Roth IRA sounds pretty good, it doesn't always work as planned. So let me tell you about some situations when, you know, it may not be exactly what you think. The IRS requires you to lump all of your IRAs together when you make a distribution, and it doesn't allow you to kind of cherry pick one account to convert. So if you already have pre-tax money in a traditional IRA, tax must be prorated over all of your IRAs. So let me give you an example. I know this can sound a little confusing. For example, let's say you've got $5,000 in a non-deductible IRA that you want to convert into a Roth IRA, and you also have $15,000 in a deductible regular traditional IRA. Since you have a total of $20,000 in your IRA, you got $5,000 in non-deductible, you got $15,000 in deductible. The $5,000 non-deductible portion is 25% of your portfolio and the taxable portion is 75%. So what happens is you've got to pay the same ratio of tax on this conversion. In other words, 75% of $5,000 or $3,750 would be subject to tax. And only you can be the judge of whether it's worth it to pay that tax. You know, you have to weigh that upfront tax liability against the future benefit of getting 
tax-free withdrawals from a Roth IRA. However, if you don't have any pre-tax IRA funds, you could convert that full $5,000 from a non-deductible IRA into a Roth IRA with no tax due. So yes, this gets complicated. And what I want you to take away from this podcast is not remembering all these numbers. What I want you to take away is to remember that if you have a substantial amount of pre-tax funds in a traditional IRA already, doing a backdoor Roth IRA doesn't help you avoid additional tax. Unfortunately, you just can't convert non-deductible funds and forget about your pre-tax amounts. So again, if you don't have any traditional IRA money, you have a more clean, simple way of doing a backdoor Roth. So if you're like me and you've already got plenty of traditional IRA funds, doing a backdoor Roth IRA is not really going to be that advantageous. You're going to have some tax up front. You know, a better solution would be using, let's say, a Roth 401k at your job if that's something available to you. And if you do have a retirement account at work, you can use it to do a workaround solution. So if you really want to do a backdoor Roth IRA and you have a retirement plan at work, you could use it as a workaround solution. You can remove your pre-tax IRA money from the equation by rolling it over into your 401k or your 403b. That would leave you with just non-deductible after-tax IRA money to convert to a Roth, a very simple situation that wouldn't trigger the tax that I mentioned. So this strategy only works if your workplace plan allows incoming IRA rollovers, which most do. Plus, you need to be sure that you're very happy with that plan's investment choices and the fees that are charged because you don't have as much control over a 401k as you do with an IRA. And if you're self-employed, you could set up a solo 401k that allows roll-ins and move your pre-tax IRA money into it. Again, that kind of clears the deck so that you don't have, uh, you know, any other IRA money in the tax equation for that backdoor Roth IRA. And remember that high earners who go through this strategy of creating a backdoor Roth IRA still do not qualify to make any new contributions to the accounts. You can't start like, you know, putting in monthly contributions. You kind of have to just keep the account as is. However, those funds do grow tax-free, and that could save you a bundle in taxes if we're talking about decades of growth. Additionally, Roth IRAs don't have any required minimum distributions, which means you can keep them indefinitely without having to take money out of them in retirement. Doing a backdoor Roth can be worthwhile if you can afford to pay a potentially significant tax bill on your converted balance. Also, consider that your converted funds count as income for tax purposes, which could move you into a higher tax bracket for that year. Plus, it's a transaction that you cannot undo if you change your mind later on. So be sure to speak to a tax or a financial advisor about the pros and cons of a backdoor Roth before crossing the threshold. You want to be very deliberate and cautious about this strategy. Thanks again to Jana for sending in her question. She used my contact page at lauradadams.com to reach me, and you can do the same thing. I would love to hear your question. And I have some really great content and workshops coming out this year to help you take control of your finances, grow your money, and love your life. If you want to stay in touch with me, you'll be the first to know about that. So I would love you to get my email updates. You can send me a quick text right now. Text the phrase, get updates with no space, get updates. Send that to the number 33444. Or you can visit lauradadams.com and sign up there right on the homepage. That's all for now. I'll talk to you next week. Until then, here's to living a richer life.
Money Girl is produced by the audio wizard Steve Rickyberg with editorial support from Karen Hertzberg. If you've been enjoying the podcast, please rate and review it on Apple Podcasts. That's an easy, free way to give back, show your support, and help new listeners find us. You might also like the backlist episodes and show notes available at quickanddirtytips.com. dot